And the Etiquini municipality wants the company involved in that collapse to face charges of contempt of court. Kralio Construction failed several site inspections. But what exactly could lead to the collapse of a building like that? What are the consequences if a construction company fails to comply with certain standards? Well, Anton Boer from Architecture for Change joins us for more on this. Anton, thank you very much for joining us. And I know you're not part of the investigation. I know you haven't been to the site. But what are the different scenarios? What are the possibilities? What could have led to something like this happening? We saw the, the, the sort of magnitude of the devastation behind yes. Cathy there. Well, it's, it's a very tricky question to answer because it's, it's such a big, there's so many people involved in the construction mm -hmm. process. So if you, several factors could possibly include, if you, if you take it from the top, you've got architects and engineers who start off the project. They have to specify minimum tolerances of the structure, i.e. minimum slab thicknesses, mm -hmm. column widths, maximum allowable spans. Mm -hmm. After these things are specified, these plans are then sent to local council for approval. So already there's a, a the plans are scrutinized, and if approved, it is then the responsibility of the main contractor to build the plans according to the set specifications yeah. and building regulations. Now, usually what happens is um, it the, the main contractor is employed under the notion that he's able to build and construct the structure to the national building regulations yeah. and up to standard. Mm. Um, and if this does not on occur on site, for instance, incorrect um, mix of concrete is used, or if casting methods are aren't correctly Im impl impl implemented, or if the curing process is not correctly done, there could be structural failure in your concrete. Um, also, what could lead to structural failure and and come back to the improper use of materials is where there's cost cutting on projects, mm. where the contractor then buys a lower quality. Uh, or less of a product to save costs on a construction project. Now just to look, there have been lots of questions about the location of this mall right next to a railway line. Would that in any, in, in any situation be a red flag? Well, um, not so much the railway line. Uh, the only influence the railway line could possibly have on the structure itself is a bit of seismic activity. Yeah. But more than that, um, it depends on the geological condition of the soil surrounding the site. If, if, if it's unstable soil, your foundations have, has, have to be correctly f um, cast up to standard to support the structure. Basically, if it's not flat ground, is that what you're saying? Uh, I don't know the current condition But if of, you say swell, when you say the swell, of, of, is it that it has to be flat or if it's sort of... Yes, um, okay. in, in s places where there's a lot of rain and unstable soil conditions, you ah. could have movement in the soil okay. and that could affect the structure of your building. Um, in terms of how long it takes for a building like this, a mall is what we're talking about, uh, to develop. And we've seen the timeline, and, and it's un there's no doubt about it, this was very fast construction. Yeah, fast it had yes. moved very quickly. Yeah. What is the sort of normal timeline for a mall to be built? Well, it, it depends, again, on, on many factors. Um, it, uh, your planning phase is very important uh, in terms of you can take up to two years, years to, to just draw up the plans and get them through council. Mm. Uh, so in a lot of situations, what happens with projects that, like these where they want a fast track project is some of the steps are skipped. For instance, construction con uh, starts at the same time plans are submitted. Which is not legal, I'm uh, assuming, it's not is legal. it? Okay, uh, okay. But um, in terms of time is money, uh, th the contractor would like the process to get started as at the same time plans are submitted because sometimes at mm. council, your, mm. your approval can take months. Now, in this case, I mean, we, we'd read uh, the day after this tragedy or the next morning, one of the survivors uh, in a report saying the concrete hadn't even set on the mm. last floor that we did when we started to build the next one. Mm -hmm. Now, who should be there on site to be checking these things? It almost seems like workers were left, you know, uh, to just carry on with this building. But who are the people involved in the daily processes of such a pr uh, construction? Well, um, on site each day, you have to have your main contractor, which which is ov he's obviously in charge of all his subcontractors and his workers on site. Mm. But more than that, your architect, your engineer, and also your local council authority mm -hmm. have to do regular site visits and site inspections to ensure that the work is up to standard and in line with building regulations. So the professional team need to make weekly or monthly uh, site inspections to ensure that 
the specifications that they set out is being met. Mm. Now we know and like, like we've been saying the Etiquini municipality now wants this uh, building demolished. Mm. What does something like that do to have this go so quickly, grow, this building grow so quickly and then to have a demolition? Um, what happens to, to the area around there? Is there any environmental impact of such a thing? Uh, environmentally yes but uh, before I get to that um, the investigation has to commence first before demolition okay. can commence. Um, so the site, uh, I hope, hopefully, doesn't get uh, demolished as uh, very soon yeah. because they first have to investigate why did the structure fail, mm. and then uh, it will be demolished, and the site will then most probably stand for a few years. Um, but hopefully the rubble will be removed safely and the impact will hopefully be minimal. Won't pose any more yeah. danger to those yes. living around it. Yes. Thank you very much for that insight. Architecture for a Change Director, Anton Bauer. News that moves. ENCA.com.